assigning probabilities. So we're going to be talking about assigning probabilities to the outcomes of an experiment. Remember, an experiment is a process that generates some outcomes. Now, how can we assign probabilities to those outcomes? First of all, there's two requirements to assigning probabilities. The first requirement is that the probability of each outcome is between 0 and 1. And we can write that like this. So EI is outcome I. So this is saying that the probability of outcome I is between 0 and 1 for all I. The second requirement is that the sum of the probabilities of the outcomes equals to 1. And we can write that like this, the probability of outcome 1 plus the probability of outcome 2 and so on up to the last outcome, which we write EN, is equal to 1. So there are N outcomes here. So those are the two requirements for assigning probabilities. The probability of each outcome has to be between 0 and 1, and the sum of the probabilities of the outcomes is equal to 1. Now, there are three methods for assigning probabilities. The first method is called the classical method. And the classical method is appropriate when all the outcomes are equally likely. Um, and there are a couple of examples of this that we've already seen. Uh, for example, when you're tossing a coin or rolling a die, all the outcomes are equally likely. When you're tossing a coin, head and tail are equally likely. Uh, when you're rolling a die, all the numbers from 1 through 6 are equally likely. Now, in the classical method, the probability of each outcome is going to be equal to 1 divided by n, where n is the number of possible outcomes. So for example, if our experiment is tossing a coin, there are two possible outcomes, head and tail. So the probability of each of these is going to be 1 over 2. When you're uh, rolling a die, there are six possible outcomes that are all equally likely, so the probability of each of them is going to be equal to 1 over 6. And so on. Um, and we can see that. Um, the requirements for assigning probability are satisfied for both of these examples. 
So for tossing a coin, each probability is between 0 and 1. And we see that the sum of the probabilities is going to be 1 half plus 1 half, which is equal to 1. And for rolling a die, each of these probabilities is 1 over 6, which is between 0 and 1. And their sum is going to be 6 times 1 over 6, which is going to be equal to 1. The next method for assigning probabilities is called the relative frequency method. Now the relative frequency method is appropriate when past data is available where the experiment has been repeated many times. So if the experiment has been repeated several times and we have some information about the experiment then we can use the relative frequency method. And in the relative frequency method, the probability of each outcome is equal to the proportion of times that the outcome has occurred. Now the proportion of times that the outcome has occurred is the relative frequency. That's why we call it the relative frequency method. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose you have outcome 1 has occurred 20 times. Outcome 2 has occurred 13 times. Outcome 3 has occurred 17 times. Uh, so if you add up all of these numbers, you'll get a total of 50. So this experiment has been repeated 50 times, and these are the number of times that each of the outcomes has occurred. So we can use the relative frequency method and set the probability of each outcome to the proportion of times that it's occurred, or in other words, its relative frequency. So the probability of outcome 1 is going to be equal to 20 over 50, which is 0.4. The probability of outcome 2 is going to be 13 over 50, which is going to be equal to 0.26. And the probability of outcome 3 is going to be equal to 17 over 50 which is equal to 0.34. Uh, so these are the probabilities for the three outcomes using the relative frequency method. And we can see that each of these probabilities is between 0 and 1, which satisfies the first requirement. And if we sum the probabilities, we get one which satisfies the second requirement. The third method for assigning probabilities is called the subjective method. Now, if you can't use the classical method or the relative frequency method, you have to use the subjective method. So it's appropriate 
when the outcomes are not equally likely and there's little to no data available. Um, so if outcomes are not equally likely and we don't have much data, then uh, we're forced to use the subjective method. In the subjective method, the probability of each outcome is simply your degree of belief that the outcome will occur. Um, so with the subjective method, you have to be careful about the probabilities satisfying the two requirements. Because in the classical method and the relative frequency method, the way they're calculated, they'll automatically satisfy the requirements, but this is not necessarily true for the subjective method. Um, for example, if I assign the probability of outcome one equal to 0.5, and I assign the probability of outcome two equal to 0.4, and there's just two outcomes, um, you can see that the first requirement is satisfied, but the second requirement is not satisfied. So if the probability of outcome 1 is 0.5 and the probability of outcome 2 is 0.4, then the sum of their probabilities is going to be equal to 0.5 plus 0.4 which is equal to 0.9, which is not equal to 1. So that second requirement is not satisfied. So in the subjective method, you need to be careful to make sure that those two requirements are satisfied.